and gentlemen, um, firstly, I want to thank the leadership of CITU for giving us an opportunity to address you. We have been part and parcel of the Indian working class. We have been part and parcel of these uh, unions uh, of, of India. We firstly impressed by the organizational ability of CITU to organize such big conference. This simply means how healthy we are. This simply means how organized we are. This simply means how strong we are as a federation. If we may go to the world and uh, analyze uh, the situation of workers and the working class, we know that the level of unemployment, we know that the declining of economy of different countries, we know the reaction of bosses when that occurs, that time to time austerity will be applied to workers, pension of workers will be taken away, medical aid of workers will be taken away, and many benefits that working class and workers in the world enjoy will be taken away. Each and every time when the economy experiences problems, the first victims of capitalist barbaric will be workers. This is not unique in India, it's not unique in Russia, it's not unique somewhere else, it's not unique in America, it's a phenomenon of the world that takes place everywhere. Of course, continents differ from their different strength. You find a different situation when it comes to a country like Nepal. We will find a different situation when it comes to a country like India. Also depend on the ability of the popula population and also depend on the ability of how organized unions are in different continents. If we can start in, in India, what is, seems to be profound and most prominent in India is the continuous downgrading of workers' rights, is a continuous exploitation of workers, is a continuous exploitation of workers, particularly women, what becomes one of the challenge that in this 21st century we are facing is the fact that we must do everything in our power to defend the interest and the right of youth and the right of women. This we will only succeed, Comrade Swadesh, when we put emphasis into the rights of women, when we put emphasis in organization of women, when we allow women to come to the level of leadership so that we can be able to drive the struggle. Gender is not just a gender as a gender, because gender affects all kind of sex, but in this case, it is directly affecting women. Now, if you go to Nepal, you'll find a different situation. If you go to America, you'll find different situation. But what is common, what is common is a continuously perpetuation of violence, of sexual harassment against women. What is common is the fact that in some times, women are compromised and forced to accept sexual favors in order to, for them to obtain work because of the condition that they find they're finding themselves into. This is a struggle of anyone who would describe himself as Marxist. If you are believe that you are a Marxist, this is your struggle. And this must be fought by you and you must defeat because it's a demon that it denigrate our class, that it denigrate our class and sector in our society. Therefore, these are issues that when we get into a central, in the presidential council in March in Paris, these are one of the issues that we are going to discuss and put, put, in, put on the table for the Federation to develop a program on it. Now, we, we, we want to talk about what I describe, and I suppose this is still my view as a leader in the in WFTO, that maybe others do not see 
there's an unintended consequences that it lead us into a third world war that is imminent. We may not realize this, but look at this. When the United States of America destabilized Iraq, nobody said anything. When the United States of America destabilized Libya, nobody said anything. But in each and every country where the United States of America has been involved, all of those countries are left in the huge of instability, no longer stable. Today, people in Libya are fighting. Today, Libya can no longer to be the country that used to help to employ most of workers in the African continent. The people of Cairo, Egypt, uh, and many what we call North Africa that used to get job in that country, this is no longer a case. But when America went to Syria, if it was not because of Russia, Syria would have been gone today. S Syria was saved by Russia, was stopped to collapse, and that government still exists today thanks to the, to the Russian government. But why did the Russian government do it? The war trades between America and China the Trump impeachment. All of this is a quagmire of capitalists. But when they're done, they are going to identify an area of resources that they have an interest in, and that's where they're going to become divided. The chance of scenario in this third world war that I'm talking about we are likely to see United States of America with Britain joining together. We are likely to see Russia, China, North Korea joining together. But these are not going to be about the interest of workers. These will have nothing to do about us as workers. Instead, it will be intended to exploit us in order to advance the interest of capitalism. Now, communists of the world must come together. And communists of the world must begin to say, how best can we make sure that we avoid this? How best can we make sure that as why we still have time, we mobilize against it and we make the working class aware of what is coming. Because if we don't do that and we allow these interests continuously to carry on into the level in which they're going to, we're going to find ourselves in the biggest crisis in the world. And I'm afraid. You will know what happened, what kind of threat that will reach from the First World War. You will know what happened, what kind of threat will reach in the, after Second World War. None of those threats have been in the interest of workers. None of them have been helping us as working class. I suppose what now is going to happen, the threat will be on our disadvantage and the truth will make sure that our rights are taken away forever. One of the important and interesting is a juggle and a struggle of imperialists trying to have hands into the resources of African continent. Today, African continent is divided as ever. African continent goes a different direction. If it is not Russia who tries to put hands, if it is not China who tries to put hands, if it is not Britain who tries to put hands, if it is not America who tries to put hands, and in all of those, the interest is simple, is the resources of those countries.
If you go to do research in Nigeria, Nigeria is the second country in the African continent that produce oil. But if you go to the level of poverty in that country, then you must ask yourself the question, why are the resources of that country do not help the citizens of that country? Who is beginning, who is continuously benefiting to the resources of those countries? If tomorrow, the countries that produce oil in Persian Gulf, they can say we are no longer using dollar as a as a dominant currency in oil, I promise you, six months down the line, America will go alone in the world. Because it will mean that the power of the currents of America will be dead. And that means the power that America experienced today will be gone. Now, these are things that as Indian working class continuously, they are on their own struggle internally, they are on struggle locally, but we must be aware of the international need and therefore it is important that each and every time when we deal with our issues, we are also putting the international agenda in one of the priorities. Otherwise, it was it was it was beautiful to be amongst the working class of India. It was beautiful to listen to the debate of workers. It was beautiful to see that in a conference of India, in a country that has been known about non-respecting of women's rights that but in Trojanon you can see women taking leadership you can see women taking platform you can see women debating this is a struggle and this is only way comrade in which we are going to be able to reach socialism if we are going to get into socialism we must be able to make sure that each and every sector of our society is free thank you very much